are the stakes to make a world in which all of God's children can live or to go into the dark. We must either love each other or we must die. National Liberation Front is a movement of rebellious activities that seeks to gain national independence for the country. The National Liberation Front of South Vietnam, or the NLF, was formed on the 20th of December 1960 and lasted for 17 years. It was an organisation created to fight the South Vietnamese and American governments for the freedom of its country and the people during the Vietnam War. Soldiers in the NLF were part of both guerrilla and normal army units, including army units from North Vietnam's People's Army. The ground armies were called Viet Cong by Americans and were painted as evil communists and heartless terrorists. The Viet Cong were accused for being responsible for nearly every piece of damage caused during the war. Though the Americans portrayed the NLF as communists, the majority were just ordinary peasants, including farmers and workers, with only about 5% of the National Liberation Front actually being communists. Though in America, propaganda was used to make it seem like they were and were everyone else's enemy. So why was the NLF created? Why was it significant to the country at the time? And how did the organisation affect the total outcome of, during the war? Before 1960, groups were already being created to fight against the South Vietnamese government. At the Geneva Conference in 1954, it was elected by America that a man, Ngo Dinh Dinh, would rule the country of South Vietnam until the national election in 1956. It was said by other countries that Dinh would, was not capable of leading the country, but in the end agreed, as he was the only one to ensure the country would not fall under communism. Months before this election, he decided that he was not in any capability of winning, and that the election to bring the North and South countries together was not going to be held. As well as disagreeing with this, he ordered the arrest of his opponents of any of anti dim or communist civilians. It had been widely thought there were, that there were over 100,000 people arrested and placed in prison camps because they were thought to be anti dim Others who believed that they were also in danger of being captured ran into hiding. When it came out to the public that Diem was no longer planning to hold the national election, people believed that the only way they were going to obtain their objectives was through the act of violence. In the jungles, people were creating small armies, focusing on the small targets and doing anything they could to cause mayhem and disruption to the government. As there were no possible way of attacking Diem, they attacked any of his supporters, and it was estimated that approximately 1,200 government officials were killed in less than a year by these small army bands. These groups lacked organisation and leadership, and had no source of communication, increasing the risk of giving away locations and being caught. Ho Chi Minh knew of the force, and although he disagreed of their strategies, he believed they would be stronger, more effective, and dangerous to the government if they became one united group. As Ho Chi Minh wanted to bring the two sides of Vietnam together, he agreed to send aid in the form of arms, equipment, and food to help them. They then agreed to join as one cohesive force, and the National Liberation Front of South Vietnam was formed. Hua To was put forward as their leader. He was a lawyer by profession and not a communist, although he willingly led communists within the NLF. Outside the country, no one believed that after the past wars that the Vietnamese have fought in and their huge loss of life, that they would have any chance to win against the Americans who are a huge military country. But the Vietnamese believed that, with the country's patience, tactical planning and organisation with discipline, that the Americans, like the French before them, could and would be defeated. Thus began what Ho Chi Minh described as a battle between the elephant and the tiger. It was important for the NLF to be known in the country as it was created for the people of the land, which gave it more supporters and meant there were more villagers willing to fight in the war for the country, to win the freedom that they have wanted for decades. To win the war, the NLF had to get the villagers on their side. They made promises that if they were to win the war against the governments, they would redistribute the land by taking it from the rich and giving it to the poor as most had not much land and had to pay high taxes for the little that they did own. This made the success of the NLF more important and helped the guerrillas to persuade them to join and fight. After the corruption and brutality of the DM government and the propaganda created by the NLF, thousands rushed to fight for their country. Those who couldn't fight or who were unwilling to lose their life helped in other ways. 
This included supplying food, safety, shelter and giving information on the movements of the enemy troops. In 1962, the organisation published the Strategic Hamlet Programme. The programme was accessible to all and was required by the NLF to acknowledge what their aims and objectives were for the future. This included overthrowing American imperialists and power and dictatorship of their leader, replace DM with the National Democratic Union to control the economic, political, social and cultural interests, to return independence, democracy, well-being, peace and neutrality, and efforts toward peaceful unification for the country, abolish any anti-democratic laws and return anyone persuaded by the government who are now refugees. Prohibit torture, but punish any DM bullies who committed crimes against the people. Respect all social classes and religions. Establish an independent economy, reducing land rent and creating reasonable tax rates. Developing a national culture and education. Create a national army built to defend the country and its people and to create peace within other countries. And destroy racism within the country. Only one year after the creation of the NLF, the internal headquarters had de developed dramatically. Most major decisions were made there and implemented by a secretarian. Out on the ground, there was a shadow government containing 20 regions. Within those regions were villages and districts. The soldiers in the districts were used to help maintain and attract support of the locals. They also organised education forms, youth groups, women's groups, and also taught them about the struggle towards liberation. Within the NLF, there were real army forces. These men had extensive training, including political and historical knowledge. They learned about the Geneva Accords, American Standards and DM. But the operations of the NLF could not be done out in the open, so they hid it with most activities described as being ghost-like. There was no uniform. The Viet Cong, who were the foot soldiers, could not be distinguished from the normal everyday villagers. Many Viet Cong guerrillas worked at night, living their everyday lives in the villages and working on the farm or any job they had during the day. All guerrillas kept up to date with basic training that was needed and to ensure they understood why they were fighting. The NLF headquarters did not exist in any known location, nor was the location of a member ever known. The members held their meetings in remote locations and never in the same place more than once. When a decision was made, it was written in code and passed along a chain or by word of mouth and in later years through technology that had been taken off the Americans. The techniques the NLF used to fight against the Americans were different to how the Americans tried to fight, fight against them, rarely ever fighting them head on. The tactics the NLF employed had been described by Robert Tabber who fought in the guerrillas in Cuba as a war of the flea. The flea bites, hops and bites again, nibbling, avoiding the foot that would crush him. He does not seek to kill his enemy at a blow, but to bleed him and feed on him, to plague and bedevil him. This all requires time. Still more time is required to breed more fleas. The military enemy suffers the dog's disadvantages. Too much to defend, too small and agile an enemy to come to grips with. The NLF used guerrilla tactics, including handmade traps set up by guerrillas during the night, hit and run tactics, and unexploded American bombs used to make fragmentation runs. After continuous fighting for over a decade, the American public rebelled against sending more American troops over to Vietnam. More than two thirds of the American public believed that sending the troops over there was the wrong thing to do. A large number of the men in Vietnam did not want to be there either. An American soldier, Jeff Nettle, quoted in his diary in 1970, I had been told I was sitting in the middle of a useless war. It meant if I died in Vietnam, my life would have been used and wasted. It meant if I just decided not to do my job anymore, I would be sent to jail and court material. It meant a lot of people would think I was a traitor to my country because I did not believe in the war anymore. It meant a lot of bad things I did not want to think about. Because the American anti-war movement was so large, protests came up all over the country. Many of the people in these protests were young people, as they did not want to be drafted to fight into the war. After street riots, shootings and reportings of American military abuse in the country, the Paris Peace Accords were signed in 1973 to remove all American troops from South Vietnam. Come on.
on, mothers throughout the land. Pack your boys off to Vietnam. Come on, fathers, don't hesitate. Send your sons off before it's too late. Be the first one on your block. Have your boy come home in a box. And it's one, two, three. What are we fighting for? Don't ask me, I don't give a damn. Next stop is Vietnam. And it's five, six, seven. Open up the pearly gates. When you turned on AFN and you saw riots in the streets and whatever, and guys were saying, wait a minute, why am I fighting here when these guys at home are saying this is the wrong thing to do? 